is August 7th edition of Back Roads of Illinois. We were central Illinois agriculture source and in the Midwest alongside in central Illinois agriculture. We were glad you are here on Back Roads of Illinois. I am happy to be with you for today. This time is serious business on Back Roads of Illinois. Big name for vice president for the agricultural industry. The grain rebounds on Tuesday. The cooled weather conditions. Tim Waltz of Minnesota. He is the governor of Minnesota. He is going to be running mate for vice presidential candidate with Kamala Harris. Waltz is a big support for the ethanol industry in Minnesota. The grain markets were rebounds on Tuesday after on Monday's trade. The markets were bearish from yesterday's markets right after the plumbing on Monday afternoon in New York. We were going to be cooler after last week heat wave last week. We are going to be in 70s in central Illinois and across the Midwest. We are back with our guest with Chris Gould, Peter Myers, John Heinberg. Stay tuned on Back Roads of Illinois. Today, we were joining with Chris Gould from Maple Park. Illinois. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Caesar. It's a beautiful day here in Northern Illinois. Let's start with our conversation on the growing season in Northern Illinois. Sure. We had uh, what I think is what sounds to be an easier planting season than many. Uh, we we got everything in in a pretty timely fashion and in good conditions we were pretty well planted by may 1st we had a few things to wrap up the first week of may but really everything went in well and honestly we've had really excellent growing conditions since then so uh, you know i know a lot of people have had struggles this year and usually everybody does have something but we've had a really good year so far How was the planting season kick off? It it went really smoothly. Um, I I kind of mentally pencil in starting on April fifteenth, and um, we you know we actually that's when we were able to start. Um, we started with beans, and then got going on on both crops for uh, most of the rest of the month, but um, yeah, very few rain delays, generally good conditions. So uh, yeah, we've got, we got really, really, I mean, almost perfect emergence on the corn. We had to replant a few beans, but nothing too detrimental. So yeah, we had a, a really a good planting season. Can you tell our audience about your trip in Washington, D.C. for Illinois Corn Growers Association? Sure. Um, this is my first time going to D.C. with corn growers. Um, I've just been on the board for a year and a half, and I didn't go last summer. So um, it's ba basically the purpose of the trip is twofold. One is uh, Corn Congress, which is the National Corn Growers you know, one of their two, well, one of their big summer meeting. Um, and at that meeting, there's a little policy discussed and, but um, also important is the election of new board members. So that took place. And then the other big uh, purpose is to visit with legislators or their staffs or other government agencies. Now the legislators weren't there because uh they were on break, but we did meet with a number of their staff and met with a number of government agencies and um, you know, basically tried to build a rapport and make make the case for some of our asks. Um, so time will tell, but it seems like it was a very productive trip. 
who met with the lawmakers. Well, they, they weren't there because they were in recess, but they're staffers, and we, we typically met with their ag policy staffers that help or write the legislation. So, um, and that's, you know, that's just as important. So, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the legislators themselves were not in town, but, but good meetings nonetheless. What is your opinion on 45Z models? Well, it the the current rules need to be rewritten to be more flexible so farmers can do whatever practices uh that make sense for them on their farm uh you know meet meet the uh you know meet the requirements of the you know, treasury uh you know it, it just seems strange that department of the treasury is saying you got to do this this and that why don't they just say here meet this carbon intensity threshold and however you can figure out how to do it so be it um and i think there's there's a lot of pressure pushing in that direction so hopefully that's what we end up with but again still not decided it is pretty confused Yeah, I, I would agree. It is it is pretty it is pretty confusing and um not um it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense on the how and the why behind those rules were written as are currently pro proposed, I guess you'd say. Do you have any final thoughts on this growing season for right now? Well, uh, at the moment, I'm I'm very optimistic. Uh, obviously, we've had a huge tumble in commodity prices in the last six months or so, um, and I'm hoping that our our yield can uh, overcome the decreased prices. Um, and uh, gosh, you know, we're we're still probably out of payment for crop insurance, so. We're not going to get any help there, and we're right on the edge of of a uh, uh, Title One payment. So, um, yeah, I hope I hope prices either go down so we get help on the down end, or up so we can get more from the market. But um, I think we'll be okay this year, and then uh, you know, twenty twenty five is going to be much more interesting. So we'll see. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is Chris Gould from Maple Park, Illinois, on Back Roads. Of... You're listening to Back Roads of Illinois. We were joining with Pete Meyer from Muddy Act. Welcome to the show. How are you, Ben? Pete. Uh, I've been great, thanks. Uh, a little bit of touring through the Midwest the last couple of weeks to look at the crops and... Uh, yeah, but things are okay. I'm, I, let's let's put it this way: I'm doing a lot better than the corn market at the moment. <laughs> let's start with our conversation on Monday's trade in New York. Can you explain to our listeners about these commodities markets on this week? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that most of the markets, uh, as far as Monday is concerned, you know, we're we're really following kind of equities. I, I think that, um, you know, you, you have a risk off in equities. Uh, people are just kind of liquidating liquidating trades obviously some fears of recession are coming uh coming back to haunt the market a little bit uh, also you had a meltdown in japan as well so yeah monday's trade sunday night monday even monday night going into going into tuesday uh we definitely saw what i would call a squirrely trade 
as far as corn is concerned, um, definitely, you know, around, around the lows, it did look like there was, uh, somebody liquidating something in there, but it's interesting that when you hear some of the pundits talk, you know, when they hear risk off, they think that that's risk off in commodities as well. And as you know, Caesar, the funds are very, very short corn and soybeans. And I think they were hoping for a little bit of a risk off in uh in commodities as well especially in the grains and that just didn't happen so you know i i i, I it's always difficult in august um i grew up on wall in wall street banks um and you know in august you could set off a bomb on a trading floor and nobody would hear it because nobody was there so even though i do know that there's a lot of trading going on electronically and a lot of algorithms and this sort of stuff Really, the traders are August is a tough month to trade, whether you're trading commodities or trading equities, because there's just nobody around. How is Dow Jones and the green markets for today's close? Uh, well, today, corn traded down below four dollars again is trading around uh, four or one and a half. It looks like soybeans. Uh, soybeans were down. Oh, about seven and a quarter cents. And the uh, stock markets, the Dow Jones was 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 quite a bit higher earlier. And the S&P was uh, was also quite a bit higher, but they've retraced all those moves. And currently, the S&P looks like it's down maybe 30 handles. And the Dow Jones is uh, I don't I don't have should we have the Dow Jones up. I have a Nasdaq's down 130. I you know, it's oh, I'm sorry. The Dow Jones is down 370. Um, like I said, just a, a difficult time, a uh, lot of concerns about recession and that sort of stuff. And when you have low liquidity like this, uh, it really doesn't help. Peter, what is your sources on tariffs to China from the campaign trail for right now? Well, I don't really have any sources on tar on the tariffs, but, you know, when you look at um, what's been said, I can only go by what the what one candidate has said, um, and that candidate has been been uh, ex President Trump, uh, who's a he has been an ardent critic of the Biden administration's electric vehicle push, um, and you know he talked a little bit about about this uh, plan to put 100 percent tariffs on China going in and coming out. Uh, he had talked about that quite a bit, but I mean recently. Um, he's really focused on this. Do you see impacting the economy? Do you have some concerns about the beans markets? Well, the bean the bean market is the one everybody loves to hate, and it's you know it's amazing. Here we are, you know, at ten dollars and twenty cents a bushel in prop futures, November futures. Uh, but you know, it's, it's holding, it's holding. Okay. At $10, it's holding, you know, um, corn's holding. Okay. At $4. So, uh, this Monday, uh, Caesar, as you know, we'll get the WASD report, um, typically a, a bit of a sleeper, but the, uh, the national agriculture statistics service or NAS as they're called announced last week that they are going to, um, have some farm services agency FSA data regarding acreage. So this has led a lot of the market analysts to think that acres are going to be reduced. Um, and the reason that they're kind of making that comparison, Caesar, is because uh, when you looked at the June acreage report, uh, there were still 3.4 million acres of corn yet to be uh, verified or counted and about 12.8 million acres of beans. This is much higher than it was last year and it's compatible to 2022 when we had 4 million acres of corn yet to be counted in the June acreage report and almost 16 million acres of beans. So what happened in 2022? Well, they didn't have the FSA data for the August WASD. They waited till September. And then in September, um, they cut corn acreage by about 1.2 million planted and bean acres by about 500,000. So I think that's what the market is focused on. The market is always looking, as you know, for an analog year. And I think they're looking at 2022 to suggest okay, maybe we get these cuts, but you know, 
I'm, I'm always fond of saying the market is always right. You can tell the market it's wrong until you've run out of money. The market is always right. And the market's telling you right now that it really doesn't care about such, such stuff. So, you know, if we lose, let's say we lose a half a million uh, bean acres from July, and let's say the yield stays the same at 52, you know, you're going to lose about 25 million bushels there. So, okay, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, your carry out uh, isn't going to move that mm-hmm. much. I would like to see the carry out below 400. In July, they were at 435. If we get an acreage cut, maybe we demand. And, but I have some very good friends that are cattle feeders and, you know, they've, they've done pretty well. I mean, let's look at what happened. I mean, in the beginning of April, you know, we had kind of a sell-off and then we, we ran up to get the fourth of July, to get to the end of June, a little bit more of a sell-off then a little bit higher, as you suggest around fourth of July, then a drop, then back, then, then back higher, not quite to new highs. And now it's, it's sold off, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that the contracts have rolled forward. Um, I wish I knew Caesar. I, I, I really do. I mean, I have many good friends that are cattle feeders in Iowa and other States. And the number one question they always ask me is, you know, when is this thing going to stop? When is this thing going to stop? When is this thing going to stop? And I don't know really how long it takes to stop. I mean, we thought that, you know, with the, with the, with the higher prices that we would see more breedings, we haven't really seen that. I'm talking about cattle here now. You know, it has a, the longest gestation period of any any protein. Certainly the feed numbers, uh, given the fact that corn is, is down to $4 and let's call it beans at 10 mm. for lack of a better number, you know, will that promote more um, more breeding? Uh, it's it's hard to say. So I, I really don't, I really don't know. And I, I look at some of these cattle prices that I see at these auctions. I actually peered in on an auction last week. And I mean, when I look at, the components and what they charge in the store, I'm thinking to myself, you know, um, I, I don't know. They're selling ground beef below the cost of production, but then again, corn's trading at the, co- or, you know, what it's below the cost of production as well. I shouldn't say they're trading it. They're um, uh, selling uh, ground beef below the cost of production. They're selling ground beef below, below the price it would cost you to buy an animal, right? So, uh, but yeah, I don't know, Caesar. I I think it's a. I personally think that the cattle market is a, is in a little bit tedious ground. On the hog side, yeah, it just seems that's that's a bit of a dead market at the moment. I mean, it's hard to find find too much demand for pork this time of year. Later in the year, we get to the holidays, we'll certainly see some more demand for pork. But yeah, uh, let's just say I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop in the cattle market, Caesar. How is the cattle markets for today? Uh, it was down a little bit. Um, I didn't really hold on one second. Let me just take a look here real quick. I apologize for not having not having that number ready for you. Uh, looks like it closed around uh, 170, 179 or so, which really really would have been unchanged unchanged from yesterday. Really not. Uh, on live cattle, really not not much going on there at the moment. I I think a lot of people are just focused on uh, on the equities at the moment. To be honest with you, do you have any final thoughts? I'll just say this: that you know, um, I get a lot of questions from farmers that want to know that are still have old crop in the bin and want to know what to do with it and. It's a hard question to, to answer. As you know, Caesar, farmers are, and rightfully so, emotionally attached to both, their, to both the animals that they, uh, that they bring to market and the protein market and also on crops. But, you know, I, I think we're getting to the point now where farmers need to stay liquid. And uh, that may mean selling your old crop to get rid of it. Certainly, some of the selling of the old crop has uh, caused some pressure here in the market that you don't want to see. But... Um, uh, my advice to farmers would be to try to stay as liquid as you can. Pretty soon you're going to have to have that conversation with your bank regarding your 2025 operating note and such. And outside of that, as far as the market is concerned, I, I pay very close attention 
to what the WASD says this month regarding acreage. Uh, NAS seems very comfortable with the FSA data at the moment, which is something they were not comfortable with just two years ago. Mm-hmm. So I think that the the uh, the acreage number will be interesting. I don't really say, think much for the yield number. The yield number is going to be based on farmer surveys alone this month. Next month, we'll get into the objective yield plots and that sort of stuff. So I wouldn't pay too much attention. I, I will say, see, <laughs> I am very, very surprised at the amount of people out there with a 182 plus corn yield. Uh, I'm conservative by nature. I've been below 180 the entire time. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't really know that it matters. So stay liquid and pay attention to the acreage number in next Monday, next Monday's WASD. That's it for me, Caesar. Thanks, Peter. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. This is Pete Meyer from Muddy Agon Back Roads of Illinois. We are back with John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to the show. We had a great conversation with Pete Meyer from Muddy on Back Roads of Illinois. Mm-hmm. Now, we were joining with John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing. Mm-hmm. How are you, Ben? John. I'm doing well. Enjoying the absolutely beautiful weather here in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Cool in 70s and can't, can't beat it for August. Mm-hmm. Let's start with our conversation about the World Agricultural Supply and Demand Estimate Report on Monday morning. Sure. Obviously, Monday is going to be our next round of crop production numbers, as well as WASD supply demand numbers. And, you know, those typically are market movers. Now, this time of year, obviously, we're starting to see what happens with some of those key crop production numbers. Now, first off, with crop ratings where they are, we are expecting to see yield increases for both corn and soybeans. I've seen as high as 182 to 183 on corn, maybe up to 52, 53 bushels per acre on soybeans. You know, the market, I think, has priced a lot of that in already at this time frame. And uh, so that leads us to a couple of the big questions. First one is acres. The there's really not a whole lot of estimates for there. The USDA did make an announcement that will they will do some resurveying and report changes if necessary. Uh, so that doesn't mean they're going to guarantee any changes. Uh, it may still be too early for corn acres, given the FSA numbers and things of that nature, as well as soybean acres. So we'll have to see how that plays out. So that could be a little bit of a wild card in here. One thing, though, still kind of being a contrarian, you know, we still got about 4 million acres of corn that was, and soybeans that was missing from the March intentions. Got about a million and a half, 2 million of that back on the June report. So there's still some acres out there that are unaccounted for. So I'm a little fearful that we could see acres go up, but harvested acres stay unchanged. And that would absorb, you know, those flooded acres that we lost uh, out in that Iowa, Minnesota, South South Dakota area, as well as any other wet spots that we have. Mm. Add in a stronger yield gives us pretty good supply. So that'll be the big key. True again for me, though, it's still about the demand side of the equation. Does USDA make any demand adjustments? I still think they're overstated for soybean demand for next year, especially given the pace of sales. You know, those are some things that are concerning concerning to me because right now supply is going to be big. We got to make sure we can get it moving. I think that's truly the thing that's driving or not driving the market uh, in one way or another is the fact that they got to lower prices to increase the demand. Are you thinking that it will be pretty bearish or neutral for this report? You know, when we get to this time of year, it's hard to say. I mean, I still think the numbers are going to be heavy. Let's just put it that way. Now, what's the market anticipating? How does the market react according to the numbers, according to anticipation sometimes is really what comes into play. That's why some days we'll have a negative report and see a positive reaction because the market already priced in the negative side. I still think the numbers are not going to be friendly in the longer term picture of things, uh, especially given the supplies that are out there, the weather that we're seeing, harvest coming up right around the corner. Uh, 
uh, you know, we're not going to take a lot of a, a lot of corn bushels, soybean bushels off this table here by any stretch of the imagination. So even if we see some adjustments in the acres and yield, I think it's still going to stay fairly heavy in supply. Then it comes down to how the market reacts. But right now, for me, anytime we get a pop in the marketplace, I've been using that as a window to build defense, encourage sales, things of that nature. And I'm going to hold that probably at least maybe till we get into the fall low. Can you tell our listeners about these crop private tour? How do you see it? You know, they're a snapshot of what we kind of may have out there. Are they the end all beat all in terms of estimates? No, they're not. Obviously, the most famous one or the most noted one is the Crow Farmer Prop Tour. Uh, Crow farmer crop tour excuse me can't talk there uh that comes out on uh for the third week of august i believe the 19th is when they roll you know that one gets a lot of press and we'll see from there but there's a lot of other individual groups out there getting some boots on the ground at least it gives us a reflection of what we could see out there uh, in terms of the crop overall. Obviously, are they going to hit all the good areas? Are they going to hit all, any bad areas? All those things are all subjective, but at least it's kind of a mental note. Now, I would say the market's probably, like I said, figuring out some pretty big numbers. So this year, there may not be as much impact unless it's to the upside because things may not be as good as they think out there. But at this time frame, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that we just got to ha- deal with at this window to at least start getting some boots underground and getting some numbers about what could potentially be out there for yields. I don't see that demand develop just because of the financial strains. How is the cattle markets and hogs markets for right now with the economy? You know, I'd say the biggest concern of the two is the cattle market in terms of how it's been acting. Obviously, we saw the sharp sell-off early in the week here. We have at least stabilized and, and tried to find a little bit of footing here as we're consolidating, but still well off the highs. The charts are technically a little, are broken in this area, so it's going to be concerning to see how that market kind of plays out. Biggest factor, though, if we have a weak economy, the number one uh, impact in terms of the ag sector will be the demand on live cattle products, such as on um, beef products. We've seen retail values kind of have slid down at least found some stability here but that could be another leading factor it might be very well a case though because of just the way the market's priced the way the market's acting you know when we had that risk off day on monday it went after those markets that were higher priced higher flying a little bit more volatility in them cattle unfortunately fell into that group that's why we saw the big sell-off that's why grain markets didn't do a whole lot. Actually, you moved a little bit higher during that sell-off time frame as they've been beaten up so much. There wasn't a lot of meat on the bone there, but there was a lot in that cattle market, and that's why we saw the big push lower. Hogs, right now, hogs are kind of holding in there pretty well. Kind of a tougher day today, though, but again, we're still watching fairly good prices on the retail side, 102 on carcasses for hogs today. Not sure how much more rally we got in this October market after it's popped off those lows from a couple weeks ago. You know, we kind of got a little bit of a consolidation point here so it'll be kind of curious to see how the cash trade plays out and how the demand plays out going forward if the, that october hog contract or these fall hogs can at least find one more push what is the cattle cash market for right now Cash market is starting to come together this week, and we are seeing some trade offer trade coming in a little bit lower than last week. Probably a little better than I anticipated, but again, there's still some good demand out there in terms of needing cattle supplies. I saw some bids come in extremely low this morning. Those were passed off by the producers. Looks like we're getting some southern trade about 187. That's about a dollar under last week's weighted average. Dress trade about 305 in the north again, too, or those are bids. That's down a few bucks from last week. So I I expect the cash trade to come down this week to some extent. So we're starting to see that activity happening at this time frame as that futures market with its significant pullback here, it's going to help try to pull those cash prices down in, in that regard. Do you have any final thoughts? Well, the volatility is not gone. Let's just put it that way. Uh, you know, a lot of things happening in the next few weeks, whether it's the outside markets, grain markets. You know, we got harvest around the corner. We got a crop report on Monday. Again, those tours will start hitting the fields and getting some numbers there. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, we'll start seeing that southern harvest maybe start kicking in. So we'll get some fresh bushels in the pipeline. 
Biggest thing I'm worried about right now, too, September corn. What's out there for old crop supplies, mm -hmm. basis contracts, got to get priced in the next couple of weeks. Those types of things could really put a wet blanket on any type of rally and even continue to push this market lower. I am still pushing for one more leg down. Uh, and then I might look at some different types of strategies uh, after that September or fall low if we get to that point time frame. So I'm still a little bit cautious right here unless we see something really fire up on the demand front that this market just could be on a bit of a slippery slope, probably grinding like we are now, a couple steps forward, a couple steps back, and then continue seeing a pace that trends a little bit lower. Thanks, John. Thank you. Have yourself a great day. We'll talk to you next week. This is John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing for every Wednesday afternoon on Back Roads of Illinois. This time for your commodity markets update on back roads of Illinois corn futures finished and down eight to nine cents soybean futures finished and down three to four cents wheat futures finished and down four to six cents. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on back roads of Illinois. Cattle futures finished and up seven to four cents. Feeder cattle finished and up seven to nine cents. Lean hogs finished and up four to six cents. Crude oil finished and up two to four cents per barrel. Dow Jones finished and down eight points. Thanks to Chris Gould. Peter Myers from Muddy Act, John Heinberg from Total Farm Marketing. We're running out of time on our show, but you can listen to our show on YouTube and whenever you get your podcast. This been Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado. Have a good day.